Shariar Jamshidi is a Kurdish-Canadian Kamanche player, composer and improviser who grew up in Iran. He's collaborated with many musicians, including heavy metal cellist Raphael Weinroth-Brown in their duo Kamanchello, and has released numerous albums which feature his unique improvisational style. I find his playing to be extremely expressive and his personal story compelling. In this conversation, he performs several improvisations and he introduces us to the spiked fiddle, which is the ancestor of the violin and is used across many cultures, and also speaks about the need for humanity to stay in touch with our traditional music. The transcript is available on my website, linked in the description, along with the link for both the video and podcast. I've added timestamps and the video has closed captions. Hello, Ria. How are you? Good. Shariar Jamshidin. It's very nice to meet you this way. So nice to meet you too. you're going to introduce us to the Kamanche. I'm probably saying that wrong. Could you? No, it's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kamanche. Kamanche is a, a musical instrument. And uh, Kamanche means the a small archbow in Persian and Kurdish language. And yeah probably you need to see the instrument and it's an old instrument and uh, before showing the instrument i would like to just say something about the history or something about the instrument and area they use it they play the instrument there uh kamanche uh, kamanche is a uh, one of the you know famous uh boat uh, string instrument in middle east actually it was asia when we say Middle East is going to Arabic area and they have a different instrument and probably, you know, they call it Rubab or Rabak. And but this one is uh, different because it has a different, you know, uh, music box. It's, it's like a bow and uh, other instrument uh, like Kamanche has it, you know, just a small part. Probably, you know, the, in, um, in Turkey or uh, Greece, we have the same instrument, but doesn't have a you know music box like like a manche. It's a just piece of wood, and uh, it things just they are on it you know wood, and there is no uh, music box like like this. And this instrument uh, probably you know it is a story. Is a story from because you know the area had a uh, lots of you know bloody wars and many documents just you know destroyed after you know any empire everything you know clear and new empire you know made uh, you know new life and after that when they were defeated for, uh, by you know another power everything just gone and uh, for the instrument this instrument uh, Kamanche uh, just they found the name in a poem, in a actually encyclopedia, is called Dora to Touch. I don't know the name of the writer, and it's over a thousand years ago. In a poem, just uh, the Persian writer, Persian uh, artist, uh, named the Kamanche, the same name we we know today in his book. But there are many different documents, and uh, it's. It shows the age of the instrument is over these days and probably maybe over 2000 years ago. And uh, this instrument is Persian Kamanche because of the you know, shape and size of the neck. But the, this instrument uh, has a different size and shape. When, in, uh, when the size and shape of the instrument change, is going to another area. It's like you know, it's like a language and accent. When you're uh, talking about Indo-European language, any part of the Indo-European area, Indo-European countries has a different accent and different you know language. It's a language, but you know, different one. It's like an accent. And Kamanche has a thing like that. Uh, the shape of instrument when you're going to Central Asia, Azerbaijan, probably you heard the name of Azerbaijan. It's a, a small country, but uh, they, they love music and they have a lot of great musicians because of the you know, past uh, system, the communists and uh, this system just try to educate people. And these people just, you know, separated from part of the Iran, from uh, uh, it's like a two, 200 years ago, Azerbaijan just cut and cut the go to, you know, under the power of uh, Russian Empire that time. 
and they brought their culture from Persian Iraq area because Persian was a very, Persian was a very big place with a big country. And that time they brought Comanche to the new area, they, to their new home. It was their home, but you know the uh, geographical border cut the country, and you know they made a new country. And these people, Azari people with Azari language, have a different Comanche and actually different tar. Probably with the, you know it's like a uh, lute mm -hmm. instrument. They play it like a da 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 this Plot. way, yeah. as a you know just yeah. They carry tar, and. And this instrument, Kamanji in Azerbaijan, has a small neck and different, you know, strings. And they tune it one uh, interval upper than this one. To the, you know, uh, just connection, the, uh, the neck and the body is like a 27, 28 centimeter. But this instrument, my instrument, is a long one for men, you know, for people. Because when you, the uh, neck of, instrument is longer the the sound of instrument is bass mm -hmm. is going to bass is not it's really lower, sharp yeah. and this one yeah this one is 31 centimeters and uh, the body and the body if you i think you you can mm -hmm. see it well the body is like a bow and it, my instrument uh, has a 80 pieces of two different woods really the yeah you can see it. See so it. I'll just say for people listening to the podcast who can't see this, it's like a bowl shape of wood and like it's bent wood and it's alternating different colors. It's very beautiful. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they made it with uh, two different woods, mm -hmm. uh, mulberry, Persian mulberry, white mulberry and walnut. Mm -hmm. And uh, just Nick has it just, uh, they made it from walnut. All, all part of the, the instrument is walnut, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, walnut uh, wood and it has a lamb a skin mm -hmm. membrane and a bridge small bridge and for tuning uh, what's it called just like yeah for tuning fine tuners and yeah. the fine fine tuners and the strings are my strings uh, are from uh, you know viola because the shape of its uh, instrument is longer than violin. Usually they use a violin string in uh, Iran and they order the violin string and probably they add the extra, you know, lens uh, to the, you know, top of the string to just, you know, put it in a pegs. But when I came out, just uh, try to uh, use a different uh, strings and I have a god string. Actually, it's not a real god. It's a synthetic god string for you know D and G, and it's like a violin. You know E A D and G. The A strings. Another part uh, is a bow. It's a simple one, very simple. And so I'm so yeah. curious about the hair because it's so loose compared to violin family. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is so loose because you can adjust it by your fingers because when you uh, uh, when you play play the instrument instrument is stay on a uh, just a pin end I forgot then just mentioned this part is a, a metal yeah pin so end. we call that an end yeah. pin for a cello it's the same as a yeah 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 yeah, yeah end pin like a cello mm -hmm. and uh, you just turn the instrument probably you can see my mm -hmm. finger see yes with your finger and when you put a you know um bow on a instrument the bow is in a right place but you just you know adjust it turn it in right and left and don't move it sometimes Depends on a you know uh, musician. Some musician, you know, wants to add the extra techniques, but usually is you know in the same place and you change the uh, instrument. Yes, that's very different. Mm -hmm.
Beautiful, thank you so much. You want to come? So was that a traditional tune that you improvised on or was it? Yeah, yeah you know, this mode, this uh, scale, mm -hmm. kind of scale, yeah. It's a sure mode or uh, they call it uh, bayat in Arabic, but in uh, most of the area they call it sure. Mm -hmm. And just I played uh, improvisation and you know changes some you know key key notes and just get back to the you know main uh, main skill the sure and I play a sure if you listen just uh, based on the a mm -hmm. and you, when you learned when you first learned um, the Comanche what was the way you were taught because I understand it's a lot of just listening and improvisation from the beginning uh, uh, yeah, all music of the area, traditional music, need to just listen, not, you know, learn, is not, is, is totally different from Western culture, Western music. And you start to listen, listen to music, not play instrument a lot. You listen to the music traditionally because people, when you grow up, you grow up with songs and instrumental pieces and vocal uh, music the vocal music is a main music of the area all people singing and just uh, kept uh, this kind of music for centuries for you know centuries and trans uh, uh, transformed the music to another generation and uh, for playing music when you say playing music we should say singing before playing music because if you can sing, you can play music. Mm -hmm. That's a simple thing. That's why when people growing up, they listen to mother, family, you know, wedding, and any place, people just singing. And the poem is a important part because when we sing, need a you know, poem, need a word. And we memorize the word, and word help us to you know memorize the you know uh, tones and intervals, and this is the first part. And I'm going to the instrument, and after this, if uh, the teacher or the you know, instructor knows, okay, you have a ability or a skill to learn music, they try to teach you in another way. They're sitting on a floor, or uh, probably today on a chair, and they give the same instrument to the person and in early age is good because you, your mind is clear and you, you can learn well and just they play something for the student and this person should repeat it, mm -hmm. repeat and repeat and in traditional way I think 150 years ago, 100 years ago I'm just talking about Persian music now, not Kurdish music uh, we had a system, they call it Maktab Khani. It's like a, you know, a traditional system. All people, students and teachers sitting on the floor and one person or teacher or leader just play a song like da 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 It's like a few, few notes. And people try. Somebody just, you know, take one note, another one, second note. And somebody with, you know, uh, just, uh, I don't know, na natural skill, get another note, get full, full of the notes, and they share it together. This is a, a very old and traditional, but today, after this, uh, one person uh, just learning music. The teacher plays things, simple things, and the ryth rhythmic things. But before anything, they teach the people just free rhythm 
signs because it's like a, you know uh, bar, a bard music you know vocal music uh, all of the music of the area is like a, you know, vocal music or very old with poem and uh, teachers or instrumentalists try to you know play this kind of music and today uh, we use a post you know system is not just you know uh, by air or listening or practice they wrote uh, a lot of you know pieces like you know they use a western uh, notation and we can use we we, we use both you know uh, system and the musician growing up but the problem of the, this system Today people very really like to you know use a just notation you know just read the scores because it's easy it's very easy and you don't need you know uh, just uh, pressure on your mind to just memorize memorize because in this kind of music memorizing the you know parts songs is important to play in the sign because you need to keep it in your mind then play it and. Uh, People don't have a you know good memory to keep a lot of song in their mind. That's a just you know is a bad part of this you know system. But like a, like a Western music, people just read the note and play a score. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And I'm curious when it's written with re Western notation because some of the notes are not the same as, as Western scales. Obviously, they're in between the notes. Are those notated in a certain way, or is it just understood if you're? In uh, no, we we have, we have a different you know different symbols mm -hmm. to add to the music, and uh, actually if you just look at the softwares like a Sibelius or finally, they have a quarter tone. Okay. And uh, yeah, they have a two different. When you use a sharp note, mm -hmm. half half you know half interval half tone. Less than sharp is a, they call a story in Persian music, mm -hmm. and uh, if you play, you know half tone. Uh, I forgot the name. They they call it chrome. Mm -hmm. You know, chrome. It two is not a quarter. You can you know you can count it. You know if if you measure it is not correct because yeah. it's not a real quarter. You no, know. and you know each each musician have a different you know quarter tone. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, a skilled people. For example, in this area, uh, the leader, you know, the professional musician, have a, have, they have their, you know, uh, airs, their music, mm -hmm. you know, the, the uh, microtonal, uh, t uh, how can I say it? They have a different, you know, different uh, tone. When they play the quarter tone, they have a different, you know, uh, some somebody played you know higher and another one they played lower you know you can me measure it but this is like a taste of the food yeah that's uh, right. but uh, yeah yeah and uh, like a other you know traditional culture and they, they, we have uh, uh, just symbols for this and for techniques as well you know we use all techniques from the bow the string instrument violin viola and we have a different techniques because we use it you know uh, some uh, temper to just, you know, add a taste, yeah. texture to the music. You were doing some of those in your last song. Can you show us some specific techniques? Uh, for example, I, I, I just, I, I will show you the two different quarter tones I just talked about. For example, here, A. This is a Western one. It's not Western. It's a half, you know, full half tone. But we, you know, if you add, you know, uh, bring down your f first finger, the second, you know, tone, as uh, C or uh, B, we call it C. Yeah, like uh, Italian people, is is uh, they call it C C corona. See, this is this is a normal. It's sharp. Yeah. It's little bit. Has a different, you know, personality. But if you play with, you know, half, mm -hmm. or another one for uh, uh, 
F sharp, ¿sí? This is a normal one. We use it in a little major. This is a major. But we, if you bring it in your back a little bit, is like a uh, exaggerated you know term because it's like a key, key you should stay there and you know repeat it mm -hmm. it's like a stop note See? but if you play the half and another technique so um, you have a Many techniques, techniques like uh, other, you know, is, uh, instrument like violin, viola, or cello. Just I play something, and you you are familiar with all of them. Vibration, some vibration. Can you see the bow? See, bow has it. Some techniques, you know, personal techniques. If you change it in a position here, bring it up yep. as a different sound. Other vibration. This under vibration. And we have uh, something, uh, uh, I don't know the English word. We call it tekia. It's like you know, you use another finger, like you know, small note for many. But when we play, you know, music, we have a lot of you know uh, texture. We add to the when you play traditional one, not uh, you know, other music. See? Plucking is that traditional? Because a lot of your albums you do pizzicato. Yeah, yeah, pizzicato. Yeah, the, it is not traditional. Yeah, it's just you know personal thing for. We have it many different plugging. See, you can use a double with see, different fingers. people who um, are listening to this and can't see he was alternating plucking with both his left and right hand at the same time yeah and uh, just both techniques probably we have a just maybe different from violin or other instruments you can see yeah, yeah.
or simple one. I could listen to you play all day. So one of your albums you recorded with a singer, but I know you often sing traditional Kurdish songs while you're playing. Is that part of the tradition to sing while you play Kamanche? Uh, for Kamanche play, you know, it's, uh, I think it's hard for, you know, when you play, mm -hmm. you know, uh, instrument like violin or Kamanche and singing simultaneously because it's hard to, you know, just uh, make a balance between your song, uh, your voice and the instrument. Mm -hmm. But some people doing that and just I try because uh, probably we, for we forgot, you know, talking about many things before going to an ins instrument, you know, mentioning the instrument and techniques. Uh, this kind of music has a, you know, a story. I Personally, I, I try to uh, to show the instrument um, as a simple and solo instrument. Now playing in orchestra, you can see if you just have a little bit search on uh, on internet, you can find it two, three kamanche or one kamanche in a big orchestra with you know ten, twelve people, and the other instrument covered the sound sound of the kamanche, and I just try started you know it is like after my education I started to just do something uh, just by myself you know simple thing and actually it's hard you play violin and you know when you are on a stage everything is like you know it, you don't have any cover and you should be careful about things like this instrument because you can you know keep instrument in a right way it's not a violin mm -hmm. You have it, you know, some some space and place, okay, you can uh, sleep on violin as well. But, but here you can do that. And I try to uh, uh, introduce Kurdish music because Kurdish music, and uh, and uh, if you listen to my Kamanji, my music, I'm trying to bring my instrument to the voice, voice of human. And we have uh, a, a lot of, you know, uh, techniques of singing and we have uh, many different you know uh, genre of singing in different part of the Kurdistan probably later I'm a little bit uh, talking about the Kurdistan because when you're talking about uh, people cultures you can you know add your music to the you know to this system to the culture and I try to present my music as a uh, soloist, but I, I work with a new uh, traditional orchestra, do music, trio, and many different things, but my pre you know, my preference, you know, is playing solo, and because it's my sign, you know, my signature, and in today, you know, life, in modern life, nobody care of, you know, uh, acoustic music, and it's very hard, you, you have a, you know, a big challenge, to just present yourself, your music, because our people, because we are, we are living in modern era, and in modern era, people don't care about it, you know, single song, mm -hmm. single person. We need a big one. And that's why when you listen to the metal music, it's a huge song, you know, it's an electronic song. And people love it because people need a huge food, you know. When, when you see the portion of food people eating, it's a big one. And actually, they can digest it, but they like it because it's a culture. And actually, I, I don't like this culture. That's why I play solo and I need the people like this, you know, they need, um, I'm going to, you know, mention it another way. We, this, this system, this technology just stop us from thinking. And... I try to, you know, give my music to people they need to think. Because when you listen to, to this uh, just solo music, any kind of music, you can listen to the just solo guitar or the solo 
piano or any music, you, you have a time to think and going deep inside yourself. But when you're going out, going out it means you try to listen the, to the big music, big songs, you know. You don't have a time to connect to yourself. You should go out. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a story, and I'm trying to uh, just present this kind of music. Mm -hmm. On many of your albums, you've overdubbed Comanche parts, and are are they all the same right. size? Because sometimes they sound much lower. Um, like the one you did, the uh, yellow. Uh, What's the name of that? A yellow flower. Yeah, yeah a yellow, a yellow flower. Yeah, uh, in yellow flower, I just arrange music for uh, four to six Comanche. And if you listen to the music, in this music, I didn't use any, you know, um, alto music, uh, viola music, because be, uh, I can show you another instrument I have here. I, you know, put a uh, just viola string on the instrument. The fourth string is a C, and you can use it. But for this album, just I use the same, you know, uh, Comanche, okay. different Comanche, same, same, you know, uh, range of the music, same level, with uh, different Comanche and different techniques. And if you're uh, recording music, if you change your place behind the microphone, you can, you know, have a different sound. And yeah, for this album, I played few, uh, just part over top the music. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, Go, go, I was just curious, yeah, like yeah. for that album, because it's more orchestral and it's very interesting, like different styles I find in that in that music. Are have yeah. have you played any of those with other Comanche players just to play it? Unfortunately, no. this album has a you know has a uh, has a different story. I I composed actually it's a composition because of you know it, it's like a five six, actually it, there was a seven songs. Mm -hmm. Some Kurdish songs and you know prohibited songs because it, in Iran, in you know uh, that system, uh, radical country, Islamic radical system, you need a uh, paper for anything. When you record your music, you need to send your poem to the uh, you know just few people sitting on a chair and reading your poem, and because they have a border and you know many uh, you know uh, real poem real world just they will delete it and they can't go to, you know you can record your music but you're not allowed to just you know uh, publicize your music and that's why for for this i just uh, composed this music over five six years because uh because of the situation in iran since 2007 until 12 i haven't had any chance to go on a stage because of the system and i was just prohibited to working mm. as a musician because i needed the, you know just paper go on a stage and it, it was very hard and my last concert it was 2007 we turn your music if you're going to uh uh Google, YouTube, you can find it. We, we play the traditional music with trio. But after that time, I decided, okay, I can compose some different things for my Comanche. And this uh, composition, this album took uh, one year, actually, because I played each part by myself and I invited a percussionist and singer later just uh, complete the album. And in 2012, this album just finished and when I came out to, in uh, 2014, I published it in uh, Iran uh, formally and in Canada just online. Mm -hmm. And it's a vocal music and probably, you know, when you're talking about vocal music, you have uh, limited followers because it's not English, it's a Kurdish and in uh, different language and just few, um, just few million people can listen to this music. And that's why this music, and actually I have albums now, and you know, in, in uh, old system, they just press a thousand CDs, you know, not 250 or more. You should pay for a thousand. And that time I paid for this. And actually the co company helped me just, you know, they published it and they got it, you know, paper from the government. And the poem is about a love, almost love, love of, uh, yeah, love. It's not traditional. I. I put a, just I chose a few different uh, poems from modern poem from a famous uh, poet 
uh, Abdullah Pashim and all people, all uh, poem Hajar and other people in Kurdi Surani. And Kurdi Surani is uh, just, um, we have a few different dialects uh, in Kurdish and this is a Surani. Uh, Iranian Kurds and Iraqi Kurds, they're speaking Surani language. And anyway, I just published the album and uh, yeah, that's it. Speak. And this is, and uh, I, sorry for that, and I really like to, you know, bring this kind of music on a stage, probably just give the part, you know, change the part for violin, mm -hmm. you know, for, for orchestra, for court, uh, I don't know. Yeah, because of, yeah, because uh, they, they have a di different range and yeah, that's a different music. Yeah, anyway. I, I thought it would work for string orchestra, like listening to. Yeah, the I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, that's it. Uh, this is about this album. Speaking of languages, so um, Kurdish languages, the different dialects are closely related to Persian, as I understand. And this is in the Indo European language family, as, as opposed right. to Arabic, uh, which is completely different language family. Yeah, different, right. Uh, and uh, Kurdish, uh, uh, Kurdish uh, language actually has a two different, like, we can say, we, we can say two different language. They call it uh, uh, Kurmanji and Surani. Kurmanji people, they live in uh, Turkey mm -hmm. and uh, northwest of Iran you know, in two different areas because uh, in, uh, in uh, after the Gajar in Iran, probably you heard the name of the uh, king of Iran, the first one, the Raza Khan, Raza Khan. He just, you know, uh, collect Kurdish people from border and send them, like, you know, uh, refugee people, send them to the north, east of Iran because of, you know, he was worried about the attack of Russia because Kurdish people, they are brave and fighting because, because they're living in a border. When you are in a border, you have a right to just protect yourself. And that's why these people, this language, I, I talked about the uh, Kurmanji people, they are in northeast of Iran, close to some part of Russia, uh, Tajikistan, or, uh, you know, it's not Russia today, but different countries. And in Turkey, border of Turkey and in Turkey. And another one, um, Surani language, uh, west of Iran, Kurdish people and Iraqi from Erbil and Soleimani, uh, they, they have the same language. And one different thing, um, in Surani, like a Persian or Arabic, they use the uh, same alphabet. Mm -hmm. They write the uh, same alphabet. But for uh, Kurmanji, it's like uh, uh, Turkish or, you know, it's like a, uh, s some word, is, uh, they write it like uh, English, but they have a different, you know, syllables, yeah. and they are like French, yeah. That's why, those people can understand each other. That's a you know part of the politic, mm -hmm. because uh, in Turkey the system changed the you know alphabet, and you know we we had, a, I think it's about a 70, 80 years ago, uh, they changed the you know alphabet, and before that time we had a lot of poem and you know history and you know story in the same language, mm -hmm. but they changed the alphabet and separate people mm -hmm. in that way. And uh, right, uh, they, this language uh, have a relationship uh, with uh, Persian language. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in the town of the city of Kermanshah, is that right? Way to right, Kermanshah. Yeah. yeah. I, I looked at pictures on Google, so beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, mountain area. Kurdistan is in, you know, in mountain, people like love mountain and uh, yeah, I grew up in this city and uh, actually I grew up in a war, you know, eight years of my life, not myself, all people of the country just wasted for just hiding and, you know, protecting yourself because of war. And I, eight years is a huge time in your life. And, you know, those years we didn't go to school, you know, on and off going to a school. And education, no, no education, no cultures, nothing. Just, you know, fighting for nothing. And due to this situation problem, actually, I would like, you know, add something here. Uh, you know about uh, politics in Middle East. I'm sure you know about this. In 19, um, 
78 or 79, the government totally changed. And the Islamic government just uh, had the power, you know, got the power, and they cleared everything. The freedom, music, singing, and everything. And I was, I was you know, seven when things changed. And, uh, I, I, I grew up uh, with uh, radio because radio was the only choice you freely uh, just uh, listen to the music at night. You know, most radio at night, they had uh, songs. I remember I listened to Kurdish uh, radio of Baghdad and another city, uh, Dubuk, both in uh, Iraq, but one of them it was in uh, Kurdistan of Iraq and another in Baghdad. And they played, you know, uh, emotional music, folk music, and I grew up with this music and just memorized them. And this very too much helped me to understand the music. And another, another important thing is the language. In uh, our area, the focus is on the main language, the Persian language, and because of the official language, the governmental language, and there is no chance to, you know, learn your mother tongue language at the school or in professional way. And I remember my father and my, my parents were originally Kurds, but they didn't speak in Kurdish at home. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had the chance to learn Kurdish. And radio helped me to get in touch with, you know, my background language. And later when I went to university, you know, at age 21, 21 I went to University of Tehran after, you know, passing the private music, private uh, music class for two years. That time I started to learn Kurdish language, you know, it's a big gap in your life. And that's why I'm so curious about language. Language is part of any culture. When you, we are talking about langu language, we, we are talking about music because music is poem. Poem is music, you know, song. All, all of these, you know, three, three things connecting together, making songs and making cultures. And that's why that time I, I tried very hard to just uh, as a self-taught musician, part of, and probably you know, in traditional music, part of your uh, uh, education is learning by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in classical music we have the same thing. Everything is not at a school or on your mind of your teacher. You should do something by yourself. And in traditional music, most of the music is your work. Mm -hmm. You get ideas and you just, you know, make it, build it, build this, you know, uh, for yourself. And that's the story of traditional music. For, uh, probably if you're talking with another musician from different background, they have the same idea. Language, music, and actually in Kurdish uh, culture, dance is a main, you know, important part of the culture. I think the only the group of people in the world, the Kurds are only uh, group of people in the world, they are dancing every time. When they, they, they are sad, when they are happy, all the all time. If you check online, and dance is part of our culture. And uh, as you mentioned before about the you know, rhythm from Balkan, all of these rhythm connected to the dance. And in Kurdish culture, we have a lot of dance and all people, actually I, I don't do dance, you know. And I play, I play for, you know, dancers when I was at the university. You know, I, I went to different places, just learn and, you know, get in touch with people. Yeah, this is all of the story. We grew up with this and with them. And, and I listen to music because I grew up in, you know, traditional, rich, very rich traditional culture. And every day we just listen to music. The music, uh, for course, is like a food, like a water, air. And actually this system just close everything, close the, you know, theater, concert halls, and musician didn't have a, you know, chance to play music, because if you play music, you should go to, you know, jail, or maybe kill you, some crazy people killing musicians. Many musicians, you know, last day, they die for nothing in that country. And that time, just, I haven't had any chance, you can imagine, war and, you know, changing the system. 
until age 17, I just tried, you know, to listen to music of you know, friends and family because I grew up in Kurdish uh, culture. All people playing tambour is a long neck uh, lute or oud, they call it in uh, English. And I play something that time, I just more listen. Uh, as I said before, in this culture, traditional culture, you need a document, a documentation, you know. You need to document in your head, in your mind. And when you, you have enough, you know, um, materials in your mind, you can start learning music. It's, it's totally different. Actually, in classical music, we have the same thing. In classical music, you should listen a lot to different genres and different composers. And then you, you're working, but as a musician, you need this. It's like a reading book for writers. And uh, that time, just uh, informal, I learned music and listened a lot to the music. And after that, when the leader of the government, the uh, Khomeini passed away, and war done, war gone, and things changed. And they started, you know, to open little bit, you know, doors. And I had the chance to go to the private uh, violin class. Actually, the violinist uh, Mahmoud Merati is a great musician and great teacher. He played the uh, violin, and I played kamanche, duplicate the sound, you know. And I just uh, learned uh, notation, you know, uh, Western notation from him because he played violin, classical, and Persian violins. And yeah, that's a, a story of music. But about the town you asked me before, I didn't forget it. Yeah, it's a beautiful town. And the majority of people are courts, but it's half and half. And as I said before, the system, the radical system, any, any radical system changing, change everything, clear everything. Reza Khan changed the culture. And after this, other people change the culture. For example, uh, the official language is Persian and the worker for government coming from Persian area, not Kurdish people. And this changing the, the I forgot the word, uh, demography, you know, demography is changing. And after years, probably 50, 30 years, the language is changed. The culture, the clothes and everything. Yeah, this is a system in Middle East, many countries doing the same thing in Turkey, in Syria, we know that, and in Afghanistan as well today. Yeah, that's it. So when they had the absolute ban on music, as well, vocal traditional music was also banned? Wow. Anything. You know, uh, the, first, the first group of people were under the pressure of the women. The voice of women, if you women sing, they're going to, you know, hell. That's simple, because of the system and the idea, ideology. And that's why singing the first things, they stop people to sing. And ladies, if you just check Iran after 43 years, 43 years, it's a big life, you know. Women, they're not allowed to sing uh, just separately as a soloist. They're singing with men because it's like a choir song. And they change the volume of women, bring it down, and the volume of men is up. And that's a story. And actually, for musicians as well, women, they're not allowed to play music. They play music with men, but if they have a band, for example, uh, women just uh, present music for women, you know, in private place. For example, if they sell a ticket in a theater just for ladies, not men. Yeah, that's a... Uh, actually, that's a stupid thing, and you know, they destroyed life of people. In Iran, I remember, uh, if you check online, we had a great uh, symphony orchestra. Many famous musicians around the world came to Iran and played, you know, recitals, concerto, and anything. But now we have, you know, on and off music world, and we have a great musician, but they don't have a chance, and many of them just going out, out of the country. And we did the same thing. Yeah. So when and, you did know, you emigrate? Changing your Canada? life. Okay. Uh, in 2012, as I said before, 2007 until 12, I haven't had any chance. And it's it's like you you're living in a, in your room, just forever. 
And we try just uh, just uh, got immigration. We our immigration, you know, papers accepted, and we paid everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not as a refugee, you know. We paid. We paid. We came with our money. <laughs> and is it this? But I like Canada. Yeah, it's a it's a great country. Yeah, because they accept all cultures. That's that's very important. In, you know, in our crazy world, living in. You can see the, uh, Russia killing other people in Syria, killing another people in Iraq, but Canada just you know share the love and keep the people because we don't have a time to so spend. So when for you came to Canada, I'm curious in the Iranian community, are there a lot of Kurds? Is there um, a great diversity of you know people coming from that region that settled in Canada that you met or? Uh, uh, yeah, we have a uh, you know uh, big community of Kurdish people and Persian people, and I work with P Persian people as well in Canada. I I work with uh, Tirgan Fit Toronto Tir Toronto's Tirgan Festival uh, a few times. I performed there, and a Kurdish community. We have a you know uh, powerful and uh, just uh, hard worker courts in Canada to, you know, they try to present their cultures and I work with them and yeah, we have uh, over 5 million courts around the world, you know, in Europe, North America and about 10 million, 7 million is not a right, you know, number, yeah. Persian people, it's a huge number. Yeah. It's like a country, but, you know, separated. Mm. Yeah, I work with them. I, um was curious because when you came to Canada you got some interesting opportunities like uh, you went to Banff to do a residency there right in 2017 I applied for Banff and just create my project you know proposal I sent my proposal and they accepted and I think it was new for Banff you know in some way and uh, because they try just you know make a residency for classical musician and I don't know, maybe for popular music or other uh, genre, we have a residency, but for world music and traditional music, I think, I don't say I was first person. When I came there, you know, uh, next day we, we just, we were for interview to each other and we were talking and I was only person, you know, play traditional or classical music from other cultures or people from, you know, university staff, you know, professional musician. And it was, it was a great chance for me because I had the chance to play improvisation with classical musician. They love, everybody loved, you know, uh, improvisation music. You can just tune your instrument, play with piano or cello or singers. Yeah, it was a great time and I uh, brought my project. My project was uh, solo music and probably, you know, at the end of the residency, you have a chance to play uh, your music and perform with other musicians. and. I play solo about 20 minutes and later I put something of that music in my new album, the right album I recently I uh, publicized and work with different musicians. I, I remember I, I play with, a, I think a lady, she plays, a, I think country music from US, Kim Ritchie, I think so. She invited me and we had a concert at the place there and I play with, you know, uh, drum and uh, bass guitar. I play with piano, but not as a concert. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I think that's a great opportunity for everybody. Yeah, Just I if never you did need, that. you should I, try I it. I kind of regret not having had that opportunity. So wonderful Canadian thing. And <laughs> you, I was curious, you went to um, Azerbaijan. It yeah, was the right. uh, International Society for Music Education. You were invited to that conference, right? And and actually, just I applied for this conference, and they accepted me. And and you know, when you apply for uh, just uh, conference connected to you to the university, you have you should write it. You know, a great proposal for music because you are an individual and you you're not you know under the name of any universities. And I applied for this and. 
they accept my uh, application and actually I awarded from them, you know, I, I got an award and it was, a, I think it was a great chance, you know, tremendous chance for me to connect with these people, people from UK and Australia and they had the um, conference in Baku 2018 for a week, yeah. And I met many, you know, um, great scholars and musicians, but I haven't had the chance to play with musicians and just, you know, going to the, you know, uh, rooms and for, you know, interviews, for papers, they have, they had, they brought many papers, but for myself, I, I had the chance to meet a famous Comanche player, uh, Munis Sharifov. Munis Sharifov is a famous Comanche player from Baku, Azerbaijan. I was a student in Iran, in the University of Tehran. He came as a, you know, performer in Iran. And for a few months he was in Iran. I had the chance to meet him and play with him. And, you know, I learned many things from him. And that time he came to my concert, you know, you can imagine after 20 years, he came to my concert. You know, different people, but after 20 years, uh, and yeah, it just, uh, this is the, I think, one of things I can even remember from that conference. And after that, yeah, I, I try to, I, I would like to try, you know, go to another conference as well. Because uh, we are, we are living in a small world, and I don't like, you know, sitting behind the borders. We should pass, cross the borders. Because we are human and we play music. No matter you play classical music, traditional, Celtic, anything, we play songs. I also noticed we uh, make a song. In That's the International it. Society for Improvised Music, you played at a conference uh, in Toronto and Waterloo a few years ago. I, you played a, a trio with a couple of guitarists, Serbian right, yeah. and Jewish, and you kind of mixed up some improvisation. What was that like? Right. Right, yeah, that, uh, it was great. You know, the first time I went to Switzerland, the first time in 2000, uh, I think, six, 15, I went to Switzerland and I met the people, met a musician there. And after that, they came to Toronto because the conference just uh, take a place in uh, Toronto, uh, in Ontario. And they came there and I invited, you know, Jewish uh, guitarists and another guitarist they are, they are in the same university, uh, University of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They, they're working there and they came there. And after that, after that conference, the pro professor of music, the composition music, Alex Lobet, is a great mu man and great musician. He invited me as a residency to go to a musical school there. And 2018, I went there as a lecture and you know, I uh, present my music and talking and playing with, you know, uh, I think orchestra, you know, different orchestra, different musicians there and we had a two, two nights concert and recorded a CD. We recorded a CD and it's like a four years uh, just waiting to, you know, publish this CD. Maybe this year or later because of you know, many things happen because of Corona. And I recorded a uh, CD, recorded oh. album with Yuki Lely. Yuki Lely and I don't know the name of the guitar, different is a uh, guitar. Uh, I don't know the name of the, this guitar, sorry for that moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an album with Yuki Lely and guitar. Yeah, it's yeah, curious because uh, things, when you know. I was reading like you played with a Balkan musician and I was thinking the rhythms in a lot of the Kurdish music I've heard you play on your albums, to me it sounds a bit Balkan, like the seven you know, the, the feeling of the groove. Um. Uh, actually, <laughs> right, they, 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 they are in the same thing. But one thing about the Balkan music is, is uh, if you look back uh, to the uh, Ottoman Empire, Ottoman Empire brought the culture of the, you know, West Asia to Balkan. That's why when you okay. listen to Balkan music, you you touch the same things. Yeah, this is a history. It's, it's so crazy. When you, you're going to uh, Spain, play, they play music. It's like a Arabic music, Arabic, because of the, you know, the Arab 
just go there and for Balkan music yeah they have the same same you know rhythm but the, with different culture because of language and dances and all this kind of rhythm seven eight five eight yeah. have a different dance yeah yeah they Your have the same have culture right with Mosan Badri and percussion I really love that as well it's it's, it's such a, a beautiful uh, oh, like marriage yes. of the different sounds Actually, could we could we have a music break? Would you be willing to play some more for yeah. us? So much. Welcome. I'm curious when you when you go to your kamanche every day, or if you play every day, what are you are you improvising mostly? Do you have a practice like the way you practice, or uh, uh, you know the, the way of practice? Mm -hmm. Actually, every day I start with improvisation because your mind is fresh. And in improvisation, you can use your techniques, daily practice, you know, it's a different thing. For example, violinists, I know violinists, they have a, a, a few techniques every morning, they should do the same thing, but probably they play the, you know, uh, notes. But for me, I play the improvising with some techniques to warm up my fingers. And then if I like, I'm going to, you know, just play scores or listening to the song, play with the song, you know. I'm just uh, focusing on traditional music. And actually, if if you check my website, I I work with symphony orchestra, with classical musicians, but my main focus is old traditional music. And I'm trying to, you know, find a way, bring that music to their daily life. Because it's like, you know, you're going to the museum, you know, when you see the stuff on museum, the tools, stuff, everything on museum, you can use them now. Actually, yeah, they, they're so expensive, but you can this, you can use them. And for me, I'm trying to connect to the old music and get my idea, just everybody has a different idea, and bring it to the new life today, for today. That's why I very much love uh, old music because we need uh, we need a connection connection to the past 
Okay, well, I, we didn't talk about your most recent recording, which is so powerful and it's right. impressive. Do you want to talk right. about that a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, this recording, my sunset uh, land, Rojava. Rojava is a name probably, you know, is uh, uh, Kurdistan. We as a court help people just, you know, to uh, find their self after the war. And I was focusing on women because in uh, Middle Eastern countries, women, they have a poor, you know, situation. They don't have a, enough support from the you know, government and community. And in this area, just women were a leader for people. They were fighting, briefly fighting, and they, many people just passed away. They just lost their life for just uh, freedom of the country, freedom of their place. Actually, they don't have a free place now, and probably you know. Uh, they are under pressure of the, you know, Turkey in the border. But that time, I just uh, think of the Rojava and I dedicate one of my songs to the uh, brave uh, women, Vian. And I didn't know her, just, you know, I learned from internet, a uh, singer, you know, teacher, a singer from uh, Iranian Kurdish city, from the border, just left everything behind and just uh, went to Rojava and fight, you know. And it's a, it's a big choice and nobody can do that. And just, uh, I dedicate the name of the song to her and compose this song for her, you know. And if you check, I have a video uh, for this album. Unfortunately, I try to hire uh, refugee people from our place. I try, but it was, it was very hard. For example, if you look at the just uh, picture of the album, it's from uh, Zara Dugan. Zara Dugan, she's a Kurdish, you know, activist and great painter from Turkey, from uh, uh, Kurdistan. And just I tried to find her, and fortunately on Facebook I find her, you know, uh, representer, and. I got her, you know, uh, photo for my album, and for a video, another person in uh, France, you know. Yeah, I tried, you know, to share my music with people because we 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 have many many great, you know, professional artists around the world. They don't have a chance to work. Mm -hmm. That is so easy. It's easy to find them, but the opportunity is not easy. That's why I focus on this and. Uh, Fortunately, I received a grant from the Ontario Art Council and uh, uh, Toronto Art Council as well. Yeah, two grants together and yeah, they helped me to just uh, professionally record the music and press the CDs and everything. But uh, I released the album in the middle of the pandemic because I had a deadline for just releasing the album, like other artists. That, that album, I, I think, very, very powerful. I've, I've listened to it quite a lot. And But when I first heard it, I found it hard because, you know, it's very emotional. It's not so bright. It's very dark. Um, yeah, dark, dark music. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. then I, I realized, you know, we need that, right? We're... Yeah, because because uh, we need a contrast. Yeah. And, and and we, we can't, we can, you know, uh, just... Uh, uh, forget uh, you know, bad things because we, we need a balance you know good and bad yeah. if you're just thinking about the uh, you know best thing good things you can compare it and we need a compar comparison and that's why and this is part of our culture this, this is part of the world and if, if you look at uh, you know to, to the news you can see the uh, Ukrainian people they are they are dying for nothing you know and this is a sad thing, and you can you can't forget it. And that this is part of our life. And probably uh, we need this kind of music. And yeah, it's sad. Yeah, anyway. But I think music can, you know, art in general. But I think really music can express things that we don't know how to say, and it really comes through right. in, your, in your playing. So thank and, you. And uh, uh, another another t track in this album uh, is called uh, Tears of Shingle. 
Tears of Shankar is a song uh, for uh, Yazidi women. They were, you know, raped and killed by, you know, uh, uh, the crazy group in, you know, Syria and Iraq a few years ago. Yeah. It's not, we, did, we didn't pass this story. If you check, you can see over 2,500 2, uh, girls, they not at their home. And nobody know about it today, you know. And many people just die for nothing. And just I tried, okay, to just um, think of these people because we are human. Yeah. And unfortunately, they have a problem today as well. If you check the news, yeah, nothing changed. You know, just people died and they living in a destroyed place without anything, without support without government and anything. And I just tried, you know, to uh, light, uh, light a flame for these people. Because, with, for example, people open the album and see the names mm -hmm. before, you know, listen to the music. When you see the names, try to find what that name. And this is a way to just connect people together. And actually it's hard. and. Uh, it's very sad and always when I listen to that music I'm you know I, I'm getting you know bad feeling trust me but anyway this is music and yeah yeah and so for that album you did a lot of overdubbing like you record yourself so yes. how, what's that process like in terms of the produce the producing of the album actually many of your albums they're improvised with over overdubbing so right. Right. do you do different takes uh, and try what works better or uh, actually, uh, for imp my, uh, this this album has uh, two uh, composed uh, arranged songs, and I think yeah seven improvisation, and the improvisation uh, recorded in two days, two different days. If you listen to the song, they, they have a little bit you know difference between other you know, the taste and uh, the modes, and. For improvisation, actually, yeah, this is my idea. I'm doing one tech music without you know cutting or you know editing, without you know uh, tuning as well. Because when you touch the music, the this is not your music, and you should just try to record another one. When you touch it, improvisation. I say about improvisation, not comp not uh, you know orchestra or, or songs. You have a metronome or other things. For improvisation, you can cut or you know just uh, fix anything. Yeah. If you did that bad things, you should just delete it. And that's why I record uh, this album, this just improvisation part, uh, two times, two different days. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a, uh, probably same feeling, same you know tempo when you listen to the improvisation. Any improvisation around the world from a musician, it's like, you know, when we are talking, we have a speed. When we play music improvisation, we have the same speed. Because in our mind, it's not a poem or word. I, I don't know the, the, you know the word about this, but in our mind, we just uh, structure the music. We don't understand, we don't feel, uh, we don't uh, touch the music. You just insert your idea in your, uh, on your musical instrument. And for two other songs, uh, you said, uh, our duck, yeah, for the first one, is a, uh, I think it's about a nine minutes, it's a long song, and two times it's repeating. And it's very, you know, it's, it's a very hard uh, piece, the Vian songs, because the rhythm is different, and the speed, and you're going to, you know, down to the position, you know, uh, high positions. And I record this, uh, just in one take, one time. It was very hard, but, but for many uh, days, just I practiced this, and it has a few layers, just or dark the layers for this one. But for another one, yeah, that one took a lot of time, and I take a time, took a time to just complete this one. Mm. And I'm just curious, a couple more questions about your improvisation. Do you anticipate, do you hear in your mind what you're about to do, usually, or not? Uh, actually, it's hard to say that, but uh, for myself, uh, 
you need uh, you need travel to to where you love like where you love and for me just i'm closing my eyes your eyes is open but you know, inside your your eyes closed and you travel you know you you take a journey and i'm going to the to my place you know you know childhood time the mountain the place i love it and at this moment you try to just uh, play music inside yourself. This is my my idea. I, it's hard to you know imagine and you know speak about it. That's why. And uh, for example, you're living in uh, UK or Germany or Canada anywhere, but your feel your feeling is going to you know uh, Middle East to Kurdistan or any places, and it's hard to kind of if. Uh, this is my idea actually if you don't have a you know connection with your music you can't play improvisation you can't <coughs> sorry you can't play improvisation but it's not your improvisation and for myself yeah i'm going to you know past mm. and then do you remember what you've just played when you're improvising like if you play a phrase for me would you be able to play <coughs> it back uh, sometimes mm -hmm sometimes and because improvisation it has a structure for just that piece you can you know listen to your improvisation because you play this and uh, add something but you can't play the same things and sometimes you finger because you play uh, the uh, Kamancha and violin they don't have it you know uh, fret and that's why sometimes you you exactly, you know, uh, make a pressure on it, you know, some some tones and maybe it's higher than the normal, for example. Or sometimes you bring, you know, down a tone because of your feeling. And other time you try to, you know, do something and this music is hard. And that's why uh, my idea for improvisation, I think it's hard to add the things to improvisation or duplicate it. You can't duplicate, but is very hard. Yeah, no, I was just curious about the the memory. Um, on uh, season one, I talked with Hushar Karyam, and he was saying a lot of improvisers from the Middle East do, remember are trained to remember what they just played. Um, so I was curious if uh, that, that's a, that's a different story. For example, yeah, right. Uh, we have a you know fixed music, structured music, like a. a Persian music, classical Persian music, they call it <coughs> Radifa Musabi Irani. It's a seven, you know, seven different modes, seven different magams, seven different, you know, scales. And they have a, a small, a small pieces, they call it Gusha. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, a building, yeah. high rising building, and a small, you know, units. And each unit has a, a rooms. And for this music, they have a, a melody fixed melody actually okay. and musician just memorize the fixed melody but when they uh, improvise improvise the iranian classical music for example they play shahnaz uh, shahnaz gusha shahnaz piece they use a structure and they add their you know taste mm -hmm. but if they want to just uh, play the same thing, like, you know, you want to play the Bach, same thing, without adding anything, simple thing, you should do the same things. Right. And we have a different um, uh, desk, different, you know, uh, performed desk from different musicians. It's like, you know, different genre, different culture. For example, another tall player had a different ready, different music, and another one. Mm -hmm. With different techniques and different texture, and it's like it's a genre in music, that kind of music. Yeah. But for improvisation, no, you can add something, but you can't. For example, you can't in classical music, traditional music, you can't cross uh, the borders. If you cross, uh, probably they don't like your music. Right. But when you say, okay, I play complete improvisation. Right you are free to do that right okay i understand so there's very strict rules in the classical persian music and then you're and, and a lot of what you play and arabic music arabic yeah. music has the same thing yeah 
And for example, in Kurdish music, in Kurdish music, uh, <clears throat> we have a vocal songs mm -hmm. in three different areas. I just, uh, I would like you know to add this to my you know uh, converse, our conversation. Uh, in Kurmanji language, I, I I've talked about in Turkey and you know uh, west of Iran. We have a song, vocal song. It's like a part, a part of vocal song. They call it Dang Biji. Dang mean mean voice. Dang Biji means uh, singer, singing. Dang Biji is a different style with different language, mm -hmm. totally different technique. But in uh, Surani language, in Iran and Iraq, we have a uh, Gorani Bish. Gorani means song, but the technique and vocal. Totally different. It's very close to Persian music. This kind of you know uh, uh, vocal music. And another things in uh, west of Iran, in you know a small place. They, the place is they call it uh, Oraman. And another place they call it close to my you know city hometown Kermansha. Their song they call it Siachamane. Is a, is a black eyes for girls, you know, it's a love story. And the techniques and way of thinking totally different, you know, from different parts of your, you know, tongue, your scene. And another one, they call it um, Chamari or Hura. They are a vocal song, but from different area and totally different. For example, for musician, you are a musician, if you listen to each other, you can't, you know, you don't have any way to connect it with another one. It's, it's so amazing. And this kind of music has a bass, you know, mode. For example, they start in a mode, same mode, but they have a way to improvise. And the important part in this kind of vocal music is a poem. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a storytelling. They chose it, you know, long story and with the same uh, melody, but in each phrase, each uh, you know phrase in each uh, part of the poem, they have a different feeling and different texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's amazing. And for myself, I tried. I'm trying actually to get something from that music, vocal music, inside to to come on to mm -hmm. uh, my music. Yeah, interesting. Um, is there anything we didn't talk about today that you wanted to talk about? <clears throat> Actually, uh, I would like to talk about my uh, other project, Camanchelo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have a Canadian duo. I'm uh, working with Rafa Weinroth Brown, and yeah, the Chilis is a classical, you know, uh, musician actually. But today he's a metal musician, yeah. and and sometimes sometimes uh, he is working with me as a you know improvisers. You know, he's adding his idea, his music, you know, uh, you can imagine uh, uh, his music contains you know, classical and metal music, yeah. you know, the rhythm from metal music, very sharp and, you know, aggressive, and the techniques from classical music. And I play, you know, traditional music with uh, traditional technique. It's not traditional technique because, you know, better than me. All bow is thing have the same technique because you use a bow and you right and left hand, yeah. And I'm playing melody actually, and he's adding his stuff to this music. And we <coughs> recorded three albums: Camancello, Voyage, and Of Shadows. And in 2017, we record all albums. It's so uh, you know interesting. Uh, we uh, record these three albums in two days wow. and just yeah without any you know touching or editing it's very hard you know and just published one by one and the last one 2020 just published you know in a pandemic we published it as a digital album and uh, another uh, project or not project cities i i mentioned before I I have a CD on the way with an uh, uh, American musician, guitarist, uh, uh, Professor uh, Alex Lovitz. And I had I have another project, another CD published with uh, another uh, guitarist from 
International Society for Improvised Music. He's a, he was a, actually a manager of the community, um, Richard Rapson. Mm -hmm. And he's a freelance musician, but he's a, you know, university staff. He's a, I think, he's another job. But he's a good musician, and he brought his music uh, from Algeria and some part of Middle East with guitar and ukulele to Toronto 2016, and we recorded the album. The album named the Ten "Meet Me in Tangier." Meet me in Tangier. Yeah, is name of the album. If you check my, you know, discography, you can see the album. Yeah, is with uh, Persian uh, percussion, Kamanche, and different guitars. Yeah, this one published in 2000. Fortunately, I had the chance, you know, bring my culture, you know, experience to Canada and other parts of the world and learn a lot every day, learning from people from different cultures. Today, I learned from you because I had the time, you know, to get some ideas from you, from other people, because every moment we are learning. And this is a big chance for all of us. Because we are we are living in a place without any borders, without any things. For example, if you want to go on a stage, you just rent a stage and go on stage, play your music, your poem. Mm -hmm. But in many places, I have you know many great uh, musicians, for they don't have a chance to go on a stage. They just play for themselves. That's a that's a big you know big contrast. That's why that's why I. Uh, you, you mentioned before okay, this kind of music is sad, another one is happy. We need a both in we, we have a you know we can compare it. We have a chance to compare it and we keep both happiness and sadness. This is part of life. And anyway, yeah, this this was my story and thank you so much uh, for having me and giving me this time. You've been so generous with with your time today, but I'm I'm wondering if you feel oh. like playing a little bit more before we close out. Sure. That'd be wonderful. Sure, sure, I appreciate it. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, I think uh, before uh, playing music, <clears throat> I would like uh, to say thank you to you uh, to just getting in touch with me. You know, try to find me. And uh, I I know today is not easy, and ta it takes time. You know, managing time and the. I, I knew it is suffered actually, and you know that. And I was curious, okay, this one it works. And fortunately, I think it's working because we don't have any delay when we're talking or playing. And that's why, but I appreciate your time and I hope uh, uh, we have a time to, you know, meet in person yes. later. <laughs> And I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, have this chance to introduce my music in your channel to your, you know, followers. And actually, it's, great, it's a great idea. You, ch you, you have a different musicians from different genres and cultures. And it's important for being, you know, being Canadian. Canadian, it means multicultural country. It's not just world, because we're living in this society and we all understand this. Anyway, I... I play uh, probably different pieces in different mode. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, thank you so very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much. The link for my podcast website is in the description for all the episodes, both video and podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, you may enjoy the conversations I had with Hushiar Kayam and Patty Chan in season one. Please follow this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you would consider rating and reviewing it, it will help other listeners find the series. Thanks.